There once was an ancient bell temple famous for its beautiful tone. It had been commissioned by a king as a way of showing the people's devotion to the Buddha. The king's advisors told him that making a huge temple bell in honor of the Buddha would secure the nation from foreign invasion. So the king approached the greatest bell maker in the realm to complete this project. The man worked hard and produced many bells, but none were extraordinary. None had a special tone. Finally, he went to the king and told him that the only way to get that kind of bell he wanted was to sacrifice a young maiden. So soldiers were sent to find and fetch a young girl. And coming upon a poor mother in a farm village with her small daughter, they took the child away while she screamed, a meal, a meal, an ancient Korean word for mommy. When the molten lead and iron were prepared, the little girl was thrown into the mix, and at last, the bell maker had succeeded. The bell, called the Emile bell, made a sound more beautiful than any other. And when it rang, most people praised the artist who had produced such a wonderful, amazing sound. But whenever the mother whose child had been sacrificed heard it, her heart broke anew. Her neighbors, knowing of her sacrifice and pain, could not hear the beautiful tone without the pain. Only those who understood the sacrifice can feel the pain, and others just enjoy the sound. We all gather together tonight, as we do each year, to commemorate. We remember those who have gone before us. Our grief is in various stages, though for many of us, loss is still the raw reality, the lack of presence. Antonia, who was seated right here in the front in her wheelchair at this Mass just about every Saturday evening. Deacon King, who served this community for years as the parish's deacon. Romeo San Antonio, whose wife from our conversations I know lost the love of her life, her soulmate. Vinnie, a woman I called a true immigrant at her funeral mass, a woman who came to this country with nothing, but one day she won a 20 pound frozen turkey down at Larry Moore School decades ago, and she had no car and had to walk down Little Creek with a frozen 20 pound turkey. Now what would you do today if you saw someone doing that? Or Lynn, a woman who emailed me constantly, and everyone though, and a woman who gave me handkerchiefs after her husband's funeral and said, Father, no gentleman should be without these. To this day, I always have one of those handkerchiefs in my back pocket. Gail, who always made me smile and I could get her laughing if we ganged up on Jim about something. Maria, a woman whose funeral we just celebrated last week, a woman I joked at her funeral, there is no person that was living that I have anointed more in my life than Maria. Almost every Sunday, she asked to be anointed. Marvin, who committed his life to life. Young Matthew, the fish head with a great sense of humor with impromptu jokes. And our dear, sweet Sarah Ann, who fought to the end, fought to see her son confirm this past year, and fought to spend one last Mother's Day with her family. The list of those who have gone before us goes on and on. And that's only a quarter of the funeral liturgies that we have celebrated here this past year. There are so many other memories too, including those whose loved ones died and their memorials and liturgies were celebrated somewhere else. The vast majority of us in this church tonight have faced death this year. 
all of them tough. Seven years ago, on September 24th, 2017, I lost a friend of mine that I met at my former parish, a woman who still to this day has had one of the most significant impacts on my priesthood. Her name was Stephanie Coslow, and she died at the young age of 28. Her death was one of the most difficult deaths for me personally outside of my family members who have died. I lost a dear and very close friend that day. So too did Lee Bartow on our staff. She and her husband Tommy and I were all very close with Stephanie and her husband Michael and their daughter Sarah, whom I baptized a few years before Stephanie died. Stephanie was a cantor at our parish and her voice was truly angelic. Her smile lit up a room. She had use in pain. She had, she had excuse me, she had us in pain because of her laughter. At her funeral in Florida, after communion, they played the recording of Stephanie's Ave Maria from my former parish where Stephanie cantored. It was the last piece that she sang at our former parish. It was beautiful. Stephanie's voice was like the Emile Bell. It made a sound more beautiful than others. And when her voice rang out, people were mesmerized and captivated. But sitting at her funeral, I could not hear her voice without the pain of her death. I listened to that recording earlier this week and I wept. I, I truly wept again. Others may hear her voice online through the recording and enjoy the sound. But I, like those of the Emile Bell, feel pain and my heart breaks anew. But I move to realize as well that even in death, Stephanie created and creates beauty. Her voice is preserved, her smile and personality, her life, though cut short far too early because of the geoblastoma brain tumor she had, even in death, she creates something beautiful. There is beauty even in her death, but that beauty is still hard to swallow. It's still hard to grasp. I share Stephanie's life because I know the story of her life and the death since her diagnosis in February of 2017 to her death in September of 2017. She kept hope. She kept the people who loved her hopeful. And it wasn't until her last week on earth that she said to her beloved Michael, I feel like I'm dying. And she did it with beauty. Michael cared so lovingly for his wife, and he took care of her to the very end. And as the dying do, and so many of us on here have experienced it, she took care of him. Beauty and dying. While many deaths can be seen as beauty in some way or another at some time or another, there was nothing beautiful about the way that Jesus died. The Romans had perfected, had perfected crucifixion to ensure that the victim suffered maximum pain and humiliation. So there was nothing beautiful about the circumstances of Jesus' death, except that in the midst of the horror, he chose to create beauty. He chose to love. The women at the foot of the cross may have thought that they were there to care for him, but instead, he cares for them. From the cross, Jesus looked at his heartbroken mother, and he knew that he would no longer be there to help care for her. So in the midst of his dying, he decides to take care of her. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. He entrusts Mary to a new family. He is taking care of her, even as his life is bleeding away. Beauty and dying. Choosing to love, even as you let go. It is a mystery how and when any of us will be called home to God. 
no matter how your loved ones lived or died, God has a healing for you that only comes from his heart. To someone unfamiliar with the Christian faith, tonight's gathering might seem strange indeed. There is so much that is beautiful about this celebration, though. The music, the candles, the photos. But to someone unfamiliar with the Christian faith, this may all seem odd. Why are we doing something so beautiful on a day that is focused on death? the death of loved ones, the dying of friends, the souls of people we miss so much. Strangers might say, why do you Christians surround death with such beauty? And the answer comes from a place deep within. Ultimately, it is not the death of loved ones that is beautiful. It is their life that is beautiful. It is their love that is beautiful. And it is their eternal life that is beautiful. The Jesus who chose to do something beautiful as he was dying didn't just do it that one day. He dedicated his whole life to doing something beautiful for others. His act of love on the cross was a summary of every act of love that he ever undertook on behalf of us, his loved ones. My friend Stephanie dedicated her whole life to doing beautiful things for others, especially Michael and her daughter Sarah. Her acts of love during her cancer were a summary of every act of love she ever undertook on behalf of us and those she loved. And her face is around this altar tonight. As we all look at the faces of the people pictured here, and as we call to mind so many others who have died, we are not just called to remember how they died. We are called to remember how they lived. Every loved one who has walked through the doorway of death did beautiful things for us and for others. Every one of them blessed us in some way, changed us somehow, showed us a glimpse of the beauty of God's love. Were they perfect? No. Did we love them? Yes. And even as we confront the ongoing sadness of their absence, we stand in awe at the beauty we saw in them, in their living, and to even in their dying. And we can say to God, thank you. As we pray for all souls, let us not forget to pray for our own souls. Whenever the church asks us to remember that we will die, the church is ultimately asking us to change the way we live. If we hope to do something beautiful for others when we are dying, we will only be able to do that if we strive to do something beautiful for others while we are living. Now, today, every day we experience some kind of sadness or struggle or loss, and every day we can choose, even in the midst of the sadness and the struggle, to still do something beautiful, to still be someone beautiful, just as Jesus did. The Emile Bell was the most beautiful sound despite the pain it brought to some who heard it. There is beauty in the faces of those around this altar, despite the pain of their loss that is brought to so many of us. Tonight we pray that the souls of our loved ones are now standing before God, that they finally, fully see God's beauty. And in the presence of such beauty, are healed, are whole, are forgiven, are welcomed, are full of joy. Beauty can do that. God's beauty can do that. Is there truly anything more beautiful than that?
In a few moments, we shall read the names of those parishioners who have died since last November 1st. As your loved one's name is called, you are invited to come forward, light the candle uh, with, uh, that has your loved one's name on it. There will be members of our funeral ministry here to assist you. And then after you light the candle for your loved one to please return to your seat. Again, there'll be various members of our funeral ministry here at the tables to assist you. This month, our Book of the Dead will be located in front of the Ambo. There is one there now. There were also two others that were set up for the liturgy this week, uh, excuse me, tonight and uh, throughout this weekend. Uh, there will be one book for the remainder of November, and you are welcome at any time during this month, whenever you're here, to inscribe names uh, in that book. Uh, and as you heard, as we did this evening, we will pray for all those inscribed in our books and all the faces around the altar at every one of our liturgies uh, throughout the month of November. After all of the names are read this evening and all have returned to their seats, uh, I will then incense all of the photographs and the deacon and I will then depart, but you are invited to remain behind as our musicians will provide us with some prelude pieces. Now, please consider remaining, uh, but whenever you do depart, I ask that you please depart in silence and maintain that silence until you have exited the building. Uh, voices do carry from the rear of the church for those that wish to have a more quiet, reflective time here in the church. And so now, let us hear the names of our family, our friends, our parishioners who have gone before us this past year.
Vincenza Vini Atkins. Maria Đặng Thị Ưa. Ronaldo Vindinko. Doreen Vindinko. King Willis. Bernard Bunny Tibbetts. Sarah Ann McCollum. Alejandro Andy Reyes. Gavina Mina Reyes. Romeo Romy San Antonio. Antonia Araujo. Marvin Winnegar. Teresa Lloyd. Peter McCrary. James J.R. Black. Matthew Matt. Ninja Fonella Virginia Lynn Gray Carmen Veranga Felicia Dion Ignacio Maria Mirador. Soriano Jane Sebastian James Ray Creech Diane D. Bosco. Robert Bob Bosco.
Helen Briggs. Rogelio Roger Kerrigan. Anthony Tony Gerzo. Eileen Jacobson. Deacon Walker King. Carmen Nazario. Joel Ray. Patricia Pat Reynolds. Jack Russo Jr. Xavier Chef Schaeffer. Singer Henry Spirjo Miriam Maria Williams Gerald Woody Wood Gail with a disky. We speak your name. 